Uh, this is basically what you get when you sign up to one of time. This is a blank vanilla project like you know out there. Uh, it's a demo project. You can basically create new projects from here and you can create any number of projects as well. Uh, today I'll walk you through how status pages look look like in one of time, how to build one like you know, for your company and how to basically attach it to a domain of your choice uh, and show it off to your customers. Before we start building status pages, we need to create services that go on status page, or we need to create resources that go on status pages. And those in one time are called monitors. And monitors is anything that you'd like to monitor. It could be an API, it could be a URL, it could be a website, it could be an IP address that you would like to monitor. Uh, it could also be a Docker container, a Kubernetes cluster, or anything really. Uh, we will actually use manual monitors today to to showcase you like to like to do the status page demo uh, but you can actually like you know monitor anything you like actively manual monitors will not actually monitor anything for you uh, so if i click on new monitors you see all the monitoring types out out here and there's like there's a thing called manual this will not actually monitor anything for you. This will actually wait for your team to create incidents manually uh, in one uptime and that'll show up on the status page. But you can actually like create any, any one of these monitors as well. Uh, I can say a test monitor, uh, or I can say home page for example. Uh, let's create a home page monitor. Now this is actually manual, it's not monitoring home page uh, technically, but you can actually change it to URL and you know give it the link and it'll actually do stuff. Uh, I hit next. It'll basically uh, it'll basically ask me the owners of this monitor in your team. So if there's a if there's a user that like who owns this monitor, if it's a team who owns this monitor, you can basically like specify them here. Completely optional. Please ignore this. If I hit next, uh, it'll ask me for labels. So if I, if I have like hundreds and hundreds of monitors in my project, like you know I want to categorize them by by tags or labels, I could do that here uh ignore it like you know you don't have any labels like we don't have any any labels in the project at this time so we click on create monitor monitor is created it's operational by default uh you can click on view monitor uh the monitor graph is 100 percent green we it's a brand new monitor we haven't we haven't created incidents on it or anything as such the next thing i'll do is i'll basically go to status pages and create a new status page. I can say demo page, uh, hit next. It lasts you the exact same thing. Owners, who's the owner of the status page in your company? Ignore this if you don't have like, you know, one uh, labels, ignore this if you don't want to categorize this. Create status page, status page is created for you. Uh, click on view status page. When I click on view status page, I have this link up top. So when I go to this link, uh, it'll basically show me a blank status page. So it has nothing on it. There's no logos. There's no five icons. There's no resources on it. Like you know, it's basically a blank status page out there. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll basically add the monitor, the manual monitor which you've created on the status page. So I go back to my dashboard. I click on monitors. I click on create a status page resource. Select the monitor which I've just created. I can say home page. Description, I can add any description I like. Now, please note this description is in Markdown, so you can literally add like links and images and you know, a whole bunch of other things if you like. Click next, it'll, it'll ask me for a tool tip, it's completely optional. I ignore it. Uh, so, it'll say show current resource status, which will show if the monitor is operational or not, and show the history chart. So, if you don't want the history chart like you know, out at the bottom, you can basically like you know, uh, do that as well. Create a status page resource. Uh, I have the resource created. Now, if I go back to my status page, hit refresh, it's basically created for me. Resources operational, you have the history chart. Like, this is the description which I've added. You can basically add, like, you know, markdown here if you like. Incidents, I don't have any active incidents. I don't have any active announcements. I don't have scheduled maintenance events and all of that stuff. So what I'll do next is I'll basically create an incident for the status page. So I click on incidents. I create an incident. I can always create an incident, incident from template if I have those templates in project settings, but I can actually create manual incident now. I can say test incident. 
Now this description is in Markdown again, so you can add a whole bunch of other things. In sentence, if you are T major, binary, critical, you can actually go to project settings and customize this. So you can say P1, P2, P3 if you like. You can basically say, like, you know, you can customize the names of it, you can customize colors of it, and all of that stuff. It's possible. For now, I'll select major incident, click next. Monitors affected is home page, for example, uh, which basically like the only monitor we have. Monitor status is currently offline degraded or operational. You can actually also customize this in project settings and you can add new states uh, to it or rename them. Uh, so we've seen customers add under maintenance or anything else really. I can say the monitor is offline, hit next. On-call policies, we don't have any on-call policies. Defined, so I'll basically ignore this. On-call policies are the ones where you want your team to be alerted when, when an incident is created. Your, you want your team to be called or SMS or email, like, you know, when the incident is created, we don't have a policy defined so far. So I'll basically ignore it. Ignore owners who owns this incident, I'll ignore this as well. And labels, of course, I'll ignore it. Incident is created. And if I go to the status page, this is basically how it looks like. So you have an incident here. It's currently identified as a major incident. Incident description is up here. You see that you see basically the resources affected, and it says home page is currently offline, and some resources are offline in the status page. If I click on view incident, it'll show me the whole incident history as well. Um, and there are a bunch of things I can do here. So I can go back and click on view incident, add a public note. I can see a new note. This is in Markdown again, uh, so you'll be able to add a, like, you know, you'll be able to add, like, you know, a whole bunch of things again. Uh, I can say create. Um, sample is my username of this demo account. Uh, this is why it shows sample. Uh, but, you know, if I go back to my status page, if I hit refresh, it should show up the note on the status page. So this is a public note. Uh, private note is for your team. It's, it's for uh, your team to write post bottom notes and all of that stuff. Like, you know, that's, uh, that's internal to your company. Uh, if I click on overview, any user in front of time, like, you know, any, any of your teammates can basically acknowledge this incident when the incident is acknowledged and, you know, can also resolve this incident. And when I resolve this incident, the status page turns back green. So if I hit refresh, this incident is resolved. It says the incident state changed to resolved. And if I click on overview, it says all resources are operational. This guy is operational, but it was down for a few minutes. Um, so that's basically how incidents work in one of time. We do have an option to subscribe. Uh, currently we only have emails, but you know, we're working on Slack uh, so your customers can basically like, you know, enter their Slack webhook and get like, you know, incident notifications inside of their Slack team. Uh, we're working on RSS, we're working on webhooks, we're working on a whole bunch of other things as well. Uh, but if you want incident notifications to your Slack, you can actually do that, like, you know, in workflows. So you can actually integrate one up time with any of your systems and, and like, you know, with workflows. And that's possible as well, uh, which I'll basically cover in the other video, in the workflow video. Um, so just to dive a little bit deeper on what status pages can do for you. So if I click on view status page, there are a whole bunch of other things that you can do. You can add email subscribers. In one uptime, we don't charge for subscribers, so it's 100% free. Uh, you add We've seen customers adding like, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, like, you know, and that's basically free. Uh, you do not pay for, so you can basically make status page private. So I, I can see authentication settings is visible to public false. You can basically make the status page private and, you know, I can add private users. So we've seen customers like, you know, build internal status pages for their team and share it with other teams uh, and they do it privately. You can add an email here. They will receive an email uh, to create an account and they'll basically like, you know, once they create an account, they can see the status page. Private users are hundred percent free in one up time as well. So we don't charge for them at all. Uh, they basically like, you know, we offer, we give you, we give it to you for free. So you can basically onboard your entire company without paying a single cent. 
we also have SSO as an option. So if you want your team to basically come in through an SSO versus like, you know, creating an email, logging in, creating a password and all of that stuff, that's also possible. So we also have an SSO as an option. And you can always add custom domains to your status page. So you can always like, you know, add status.yourcompany.com uh, and, you know, your status page will be available on that domain. SSL will be automatically provisioned for you. And you can do a whole bunch of other things. You can add logo and title and five icon, uh, uh, like you know, as well. You can actually basically like, you know, edit HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all of that is very possible as well. And to email your subscribers or your customers, we also offer custom SMTP. So you can basically like, you know, set up custom SMTP server uh, from your domain. By default, all the emails will go through oneuptime.com domain but you can basically set up your own custom SMTP server uh, to send emails to your customer from, to send emails to your customers from your, your email server versus our, our email servers. So that's basically possible as well. Uh, so these are like few basic features of status page. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of other things. You can create scheduled maintenance events. Uh, you can basically create announcements if you like you can like you know you can basically do that uh it'll show up on the status page so status pages lets you uh keep your customers updated proactively uh it'll help you reduce support costs so customers don't go to support team they basically go to your status page directly and we do a whole bunch more so we do like you know a whole lot more like you know uh, like on-call policies and monitoring and incidents like you know we'll basically get to that in a like in a, like in a separate video Thank you so much for listening and if there's anything we could do for you, please reach out to our support team at sales at oneuptime.com. Uh, we're more than happy to like you know, help you uh, and do a, like, do a demo for you.